This is the place. I enjoy training here to the sound of music. The faint sound of birdsong. Oh, okay, fine. Oh, and a melody is. Hey, don't you patronize Paimon? Hey, why don't you just sing though? Mm-hmm. Oh, was that? Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, it As I watched when you hummed that. Oh. Wow, music definitely has the power to bring up memories. It's like, what about you? Um. I know some local folk, the songs of the sailors down at the docks. Yes, that's right. In the past, whenever I heard the sound of those ch- Nanny and Liu probably view me as a non-human. And they are right, in the sense that I never could- At least, that's the view I held in the past. Only more recently did I stop the way those mel- Even though we come- In that sense- You go, God- Yes, technically speak. Thank you. Ever- Once the days are- I've planted men- uh, you nonsense. You I have cultivated and I will save some for decoration. We can feed then. Do people say that? It doesn't matter, okay? You got the point across. No need to split hairs. Um, Paimon's more concerned about your idea of a girl's night out. Hm. Who dares refer to one not by one's adeptus title, but merely as that illuminated bird? Master. Our greetings, Cloud Retainer. Ah, there it is! The illuminated bird has landed! Double hoof. Now she has the gall to use it rather than she. Even after being chastised once already? Huh. Barely a moment has passed since we last met, and yet your impertinence has reached new heights. Very well. If you refuse to learn your lesson, one shall scold you no further. One has received your message from Ganyu. On the matter of the Adeptus you seek, one suspects to know their identity. Well, shall one lead the way? I still have to complete my training for today, so I will bid farewell to everyone here. Very well. Await my arrival at one's abode later this night. On this special occasion, you should indulge yourself with some savory dishes. If you want to release a Shao Lantern, come and find us any time. Thank you, everyone. Happy Lantern Rite to you, too. familiar with the name Guizhong, but have you ever heard of her? Guizhong is another name of Agentis, the god of dust. She was extroverted in nature and adored social gatherings and inventions alike. Long ago, this region was yet a prosperous assembly. Gui Zhang often invited her friends to visit her home, reserving for us seats around the largest stone table. Seagazer would always bring out his latest treasure and place it upon the table. Ah, oh, he could be quite the braggart. Though usually a mild-mannered fellow, when it came to those collectibles he was so fond of, he always loved to show them off. Is that name? So that's what Seagazer was like. 
He was an old friend and a former rival. One has many memories of him. Once he had brought out the treasure, it would predictably become the center of attention. Neither Guizhong nor one was content to let him just steal the spotlight. So we would then also present our proudest mechanical creations. As Adepti, we were each gifted in our own ways, and naturally proud of our accomplishments and our respective fields of expertise. As a result, one often quarreled with Seagazer. His treasures were not even of his own making. He just used his exploration skills to dig them out of the ground. How, pray tell, could he compare to me, when every single one of one's accomplishments were crafted by one's own hand? Cloud Retainer, you are getting competitive again. <laughs> one digresses. Regardless, every time an argument occurred, Guizhong would come over to watch us during our mutual lambastics. On some occasions, she would join in, and on others, she'd take one of us by the limb and start uttering the most ridiculous nonsense. What kind of nonsense? No kind of nonsense were we spared. Sometimes she would brazenly opine, Ah, why argue between yourselves when neither of you could ever hope to beat me? Other times, she would make unsolicited suggestions, such as, Once you two are done arguing, let's go to the foot of the mountain and grill some meat. She always sought to make everyone happy, and one must say, she had quite the gift for it. No matter what nonsense she said, one never felt bothered or offended. It also helped that she never referred to one as that illuminated bird or ladybird. You come on, get over yourself. Huh. Anyway, just as our impassioned arguments would reach the apex of acrimony, Marchosius would bring his delectable dishes to the table. Who would dare snub the stove god and his wondrous creations? At the sight of him, we would all immediately drop the argument and prepare the table for a night of feasting and drinking. <laughs> Back then, one was always bothered by how the cups Rex Lapis brought were always too square for one's taste. Can you see yourselves ever enjoying a drink from a square cup? Precisely. So, as you can see, even one as great as Rex Lapis was not immune to making the occasional blunder. Even one could never find fault with Marchosius's cooking. As we ate, Guizhong would continue to find topics for conversation, filling the table with humor and laughter. Each of those old fossils had their character flaws and points of obstinacy. So why was it that whenever we dined together, we always had a marvelous time? We would drink together from a spot high in the mountains, until the moon sat and the sun rose, and only then would the banquet finally come to an end. Streetwood Rambler would often remain to admire the flowers with Guizhong before returning to her own abode. The glaze lilies were far more abundant back then. Entire fields of them would appear to the eye as a veritable sea of flowers. Streetwood Rambler? That would be Ping. You probably know her as Madam Ping. Oh, okay. Wait, this is a lovely story and everything, but didn't we come here to find that Adeptus from Mr. Dvorak's story? Or are you saying that it was Guizhong? Didn't she... um... already... um... Alas, long has one avoided this place for precisely that reason. The sights here are a reminder of a time long gone and evoke much sorrow. 
One should have guessed that you would disrupt one's poignant moment of mourning with your incessant questioning. No matter, one will share the whole story with you now. In times gone by, one quarreled oft with Guizhong concerning mechanical principles. We each had our ideals, and neither would yield. Under the pretext of a social gathering, one invited the impartial Rex Lapis to judge the quality of our creations. But Rex Lapis declared that Guizhong's obscuro vulpus mechanism was superior. <laughs> Though one was too proud to acknowledge it, in one's heart, one knew that Guizhong was indeed the superior talent in the mechanical arts. As for the story between Guizhong and Streetward Rambler, that begins with a certain bell. In Guizhong's opinion, while mechanisms were no substitute for human composers, they were yet capable of producing simple but fine melodies. But Streetward Rambler believed music to be an expression of the soul, an emotional enterprise that could never hope to be replicated by machinery. They argued endlessly, until one asked Rex Lapis to intercede. He confiscated the bell and designated it for ceremonial use. Thereafter, one would often find them convening in the mountains, discussing music, mechanics, and all the affairs of the mortal world. But these good times were not to last. War broke out between the gods, and soon engulfed the Guili Plains. Guizhong was overpowered by the enemy and fell in battle. When Streetwood Rambler and I arrived at the scene at long last, all that remained among the ruins was her lifeless body. After this, at Streetwood Rambler's request, Rex Lapis granted her the cleansing bell for safekeeping. To honor our friend's memory, one made a few finishing touches to her ballistic device. Many lantern rites have passed since then. Many greetings and goodbyes. Upon what do you gaze? The Gwaili Plains? No. It's... everything. We think of human life as like a lantern that's lit one minute and extinguished the next. But are we adepti so different? Perhaps as dust settles after a storm, we too must one day return to the world below. One has always been austere and private by nature, and has never relished socializing. One's dealings with Guizhong were born out of discussions on the discipline of mechanics. What? You have loads of friends! And you seem pretty chatty. Just because one is not ignorant of social graces does not mean one is fond of them. One is perfectly capable of partaking in conversation despite being introverted. But in the end, one is nothing like Streetward Rambler. She is dauntless but thoughtful, not to mention eloquent and wise. Moreover, her friendship with Guizhong was far greater than one's own. Back when they were rivals, they would often compete against one another in the realm of musical composition. That cleansing bell was one of Guizhong's proudest works, having the ability to both compose and perform. Weird. Didn't Madame Ping say she pestered an old friend for that bell? And she also said something about being a vain beauty when she was young or something. Streetward Rambler, a vain beauty. <laughs> My foot. That bell has a sad history. Clearly, she refrained from sharing with you the truth of its origins since the right time had not yet come. As for her old friend, who else could it be? As soon as Streetward Rambler heard that a certain Zhongli wished to borrow the bell, 
she realized that the man was none other than Rex Lapis, and that he had made an enormous decision. After all, we all have known each other for several millennia. Some things between us are implicitly understood. Whoa! So they were talking in secret code? Oh, Paimon did not see that one coming. Hmm. <laughs> Enough of your intrusions. Where was one up to? Ah, yes. One remembers now. The cleansing bell is powered by a mechanical art and can be used to great effect as an accompanying instrument. After the passing of its creator, it was used on numerous occasions during rites of parting. But Streetward Rambler did not acquire it from Rex Lapis for the purpose of producing further funerary tunes. No, each time she rang it, it was to play the tune that Guizhong composed on it. The two once clashed over their beliefs about the meaning of music. Who would have thought that with Guizhong's passing and Streetward Rambler's mourning, two tunes composed in discord would eventually become one harmonious composition? <sighs> once upon a time, Streetwood Rambler also loved gatherings, liquor, and music. But after Guizhong passed, she preferred her own company. She could often be found sitting alone at a mountain summit, contemplating and reminiscing with her zither. The music would go from mournful to soothing to impassioned. Many years passed before she finally composed a melody to her satisfaction. In celebration, she played the tune to the clouds. Regrettably, one has only ever heard her play that tune once. Which brings one back to the matter you've been investigating. Perhaps it was during that performance that the ancestor of your Fontaine friend fell into the water and was saved by Streetwood Rambler. If she was so happy with the melody, why would she only play it once? One was also greatly perplexed by this. After suppressing one's curiosity for a long while, one finally approached her and asked why she would retire the tune after having spent so long on it. In response, she said, Though the strings that played that melody survive, the one who inspired it is gone. Tell me, Cloud Retainer, when the one attuned to my soul is no longer here, who else could hope to understand this tune? Aww, poor Madam Ping. I just remember being taken care of by you when I was young. Once the Archon War came to an end, I stayed behind in Liyue Harbor to honor my contract. Although I met Guizhong a few times, I never knew anything of this particular story. Guizhong was quite the visionary, but tragically passed before her time. Her manuscripts still lie unfinished in the realm of clouds. The blank pages give one cause for contemplation on what might have been. Had you not decided to search for that mystery Adeptus, Perhaps these stories, too, would have been lost to the sands of time. As of now, you know the truth. That the Adeptus who rescued the drowning man was none other than Streetwood Rambler. Do you intend to discuss this with her? Do you mean, Ping might find the topic too distressing? Precisely. The passing of our old friend is a heavy topic that both of us are usually careful to avoid. If I may be so bold, Cloud Retainer, could it be that this is just your own personal opinion? Oh? How so? 
I've been in Leo Harbor for quite a long time now, and I've witnessed many farewells along the way. So I, too, am well acquainted with the pain of the passing of a loved one. But this doesn't bring the city or its people to a standstill. They have to keep moving forward. Someone as perceptive and wise as Ping will surely have come to understand and embrace this. Though these immortal mountains have lost an adeptus, the harbor of mortals has gained a wise elder. No loss can ever be undone, but there is always much that can still be gained. Ping has helped countless people and will guide many others in the years to come. And all to whom she extends a helping hand become her friends. People she can admire flowers and discuss music with. Though it is heartbreaking to lose a kindred spirit, life goes on because there are new friends waiting for you further down the road. We even asked Madame Ping what she thought about adding a music festival to this year's Lantern Rite. Oh, when we get back, why don't we just ask her if she'd like to perform? Maybe we can even get her up on stage. <laughs> you youngsters and your imaginations. Why don't you come with us? It's been a long time since you last spoke with Ping, and Leo Harbor is always decorated so beautifully during the festival period. Is not every Lantern Rite the same in this regard? Were there ever anything new to discuss, one in Ping could meet any day of the year. I disagree. Each new day and each new year is different from those that have come before. How long will you simply let them pass you by? Very well. Then one will be off. If the other old fossils have sneaked away into the city to amuse themselves, one shall soon find out. All right. We should be getting back to the harbor as well. We don't want to keep her waiting. <sighs> Once the Gwaili assembly, now the Gwaili plains. Say, if we planted flowers there and cared for them carefully enough, do you think that one day we'd be able to recreate the Sea of Glaze Lilies? Allow one to take back one's praise from a moment prior. You are still far too given to flights of fancy, child. What? Cloud Retainer? Y you were still listening? One observed that you were making no effort to leave, and returned to chasten and hasten you. This time, one is departing in earnest. It appears you made haste after all. One arrived but moments before you. Oh, bless my soul. To what do I owe the honor? How nice of you all to come and visit me. Miss Illuminated Bird, haven't you said anything yet? Said what, precisely? And why should one be tasked with saying it? You're the one who's known Madame Ping the longest. <sighs> Street word. <clears throat> or rather, presumably, you would prefer to be addressed as Ping? Oh, Cloud Retainer, you are uncommonly polite today. One, uh... uh hmm. 
Given that Lantern Rite is almost upon us, the weather in the city is most pleasant, and a sweet floral fragrance lingers in the air. Ahem. <clears throat> Ganyu, please continue from here. Huh? Uh, all right? So, this all started because we were trying to help Mr. Dvorak find the Adeptus who saved his ancestor's life. Cloud Retainer informed us that the one who played that melody and rescued the drowning man was none other than yourself. Ah, huh. let me think. Yes, I do believe I recall that encounter. <sighs> what a long time ago that was. I'm surprised that you still remember it. Even more astonishing, perhaps, is the fact that this story has survived this long at all, when mortal lives are so very brief. <laughs> it appears that she has proven herself right once again. Who's she? We like to call her Guizhong. From the look in Cloud Retainer's eyes, I sense that she has already told you all about her. <sighs> Albeit reluctantly, one might add. <laughs> there is no harm done. After all, Lantern Rite's very purpose is to commemorate the heroes who gave their lives for Liu Wei. Although Gui Zhong did not live to see the splendid sights of today, she was as much a hero as any other. Right again, exactly? Once upon a time, she said to me that humans were a weak form of life that she wished to protect with her wisdom. But as she interacted more and more with them, her opinions on them began to change. She marveled at the beautiful complexity of their spirits, the sheer splendor of all they could accomplish through their hard work and intelligence. She told us that to underestimate human potential would be to make a grave mistake. With the smallest amount of guidance, enormous power can be unleashed in them, and a human who has reached their full potential may well be her equal. Someone who could have as much to teach an adeptus as to learn from them. <laughs> She always had a way with words. That her mechanical accomplishments were judged superior to one's own was, one suspects, in large part due to her sheer eloquence. Speaking of mechanics, Cloud Retainer, do you still remember that potted plant mechanism? The one that the two of you gave me as a gift? Of course. Gui Zhang and Wan both put an immense amount of effort into that gift. It would be no overstatement to call it a testament to each of our individual technical genius. As Gui Zhang once said, it takes every blade of grass and every flower to make a homeland. When I see the sight of Liyue Harbor before us today, I am reminded of this. Madam Ping looks very emotional right now. <sighs> of all of us, it was Gui Zhong who was the fondest of these grand and exciting occasions. <sighs> if she were still with us, I'm quite sure she would still be trying to best Cloud Retainer's finest works at every opportunity. Liyue Harbor is always filled with the sound of music at this time of the year. If she were here, one is certain that she would seek you out to discuss and debate the virtues of various melodies. Oh yeah! Music! We've been dying to ask, what was the melody that you played back then? Oh, also, with you being such a music expert and all, why don't you join the concert as a performer? I can make arrangements right away. Oh. 
As much as I don't wish to dampen your enthusiasm, it's been a long time since I played this zither. My fingers don't have the dexterity they once did. And whenever I play that tune, it always reminds me of her. I start wondering what she would think of the changes I have made to her melody. There was a period of time whenever I started strumming, it almost felt like she was back again. Sitting right there on the stone stool next to me, chatting away. Skybracer and Seagazer too, looking just like they did in the old days. No matter how much time goes by, the moment that melody starts playing, it transports me right back to that time in my memory. So the past still weighs heavily on your heart? Well, I would be lying to myself if I claimed to have completely moved on. But that is not to say that grief doesn't get easier with time. Despite the sadness, I have found many things that bring me joy in life. It is simply the nature of the world in which we live that, even if one wished to mourn for an eternity, it would be a nigh-impossible feat. Just look at this potted plant. Isn't it stunning? It takes an honest and open mind to confront and conquer grief. You have indeed made progress. <laughs> be that as it may, I shall leave the lantern right stage to the youth of today. Well, if you're sure... Granny! <laughs> Whoa, what's everyone doing here? Did something bad happen? Aha! Uh -huh. And now we've spooked Yanfei. <laughs> no, no. Everyone's just here to give me their regards for the holiday. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm glad. Well, in that case, happy lantern ride, everyone. Happy lantern ride. Oh, I... I just remembered that I have some, uh, work to do at your High Pavilion that I need to discuss with Yenfei. I haven't been able to find a chance until now. I will leave Mr. Dvorak in your capable hands. Cloud Retainer, Ping, we will be off for now. Huh? Does it have to be right now? Which case is this again? Hey, Ganyu! <laughs> It seems Ganyu still has much to learn when it comes to the art of deception. What a pity. She has learned nothing of one's ability to carry a conversation. Since it's been so long, Cloud Retainer, why don't you stay? I'll make a cup of tea and we can chat a while. Gladly. This was one's intention as well. When you next see the Fontaine musician, Please give him my regards. I'd like to wish him the very best with the concert. You got it, Madam Ping. Thank you all. I think you've listened to enough of my nattering for one day. As for that melody, I will play it for you all another time. Goodness knows I need to practice it first. Wow, that'd be great! We'll look forward to it. <laughs> when that time comes, wherever her spirit may be among the countless grains of sand and specks of dust between the harbor and the mountains, perhaps she will look at the Leoa of today and steal a smile when she sees the prosperous land that it has become.
set all of this up. Welcome back. Did everything go well? Really, really well. We found the person Mr. Dvorak was looking for. Uh, are you serious? Uh, I see. So the melody my ancestor heard was an adeptus remembering her late friend? That certainly explains why it was such a powerful and poignant tune. Huh. That's a really interesting first reaction. Guess that comes with having a musical mind. I have to say, though, it, it's hard to believe that the fairy from the tale is now an elderly granny. Oh, Paimon knows exactly what you mean. Normally, adepti don't age at all. But Streetward Rambler, or Madam Ping as we know her, probably only became old because it's what she wanted for herself. Madam Ping possesses vast knowledge and great wisdom. Whatever physical form she may decide to take, her mind and wits are as sharp as they come. Yep, Kuching summed it up perfectly. That's exactly what Paimon was trying to say. I think... Mm, yes, I must thank her in person. That can wait until after the concert, though. For now, I need to devote all my emotional energy to the performance. Ah, speaking of, Madame Ping wishes you all the best at the music festival. Paimon has a sneaking suspicion that she'll stay in her usual spot, but listen to the performances from afar. Wait, are you serious? Huh. Oh no, now I'm starting to get nervous. Okay, all right. Nope, another rehearsal is in order. Please excuse me, everyone. Mr. Dvorak? Oh, he's already gone. Paima wasn't even finished telling him everything. Before we set off on our search with Ganyu, he asked us about what music means to people. After our recent adventure, Paimon thinks we have a lot more to say about that now. Please. Share your insights with me. Uh, well, we found out that music can be used for good, but also for bad. Um, it can make people happy and moved, but it can also be sad and bittersweet. And music is like a kind of memory written in people's hearts. It can put you in touch with feelings from a totally different time and place. <laughs> it sounds like you had an eventful trip. Don't worry, I'm sure Ganyu will fill me in on all the details shortly. Wait, does that mean you're gonna carry on working? Mm-hmm. Just a few things to wrap up. All the groundwork is done. As long as everyone enjoys the festival activities, all our efforts are worthwhile. Happy Lantern Rite to you as well. taken care of, right? Oh, no, wait. Paima feels like she's forgetting something. Why? What was it? Oh, it feels like it was a while ago. Ah, uh, shoot! Latent... Wait, no. Anyway, uh... Fancy bamboo shoots! Zhang Li said he wasn't in a hurry, so if we went now, there's probably still time, right? Anyway, even if we don't make it, it's not our fault. He could have totally picked them by himself. Ugh. Anyway, let's go check with him at Wang Chung Funeral Parlor.
da 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 Oh! All right, let's take a break here. Oh, wow, look who it is! Are you here to hang out with everyone's favorite funeral director? So you're just casually practicing your rapping skills at the entrance to your funeral parlor? In... <laughs> After everything we've been through. You don't see me for a hot minute, and you're back to being scared of your own shadow. We have all this open space. A clear view of the mountains behind and the sea in front. Not to mention we have several invisible audience members enthusiastically cheering us on. It's the perfect spot to rehearse. Invisible audience members? <laughs> Gotta say, it took me a few days to get used to Director Who's way of talking. <laughs> Shin Yan was pretty spooked too when she first got here. Just like when she sees a frog, but a giant frog with sharp teeth. Come on, knock it off. What's wrong? I've never seen someone look so confused before. Well, don't worry, because Director Who's here to explain it all. <clears throat> there once was a Fontaine musician who went around town on a mission. He came door to door for his iridescence tour, looking for acts to audition. With my words, Shin Yan's courts and Yunjin as our mentor, We'll take the stage by storm, with flames roaring, and the whole audience calling for more. For sure! The whole dance floor will be yelling, Encore! Encore! Oh, now Paimon's rhyming along. Um, but when you say flames roaring, are you sure this will be safe? <laughs> oh, don't you worry about that. I'm pretty experienced on the stage, and I've already informed the Yuhong of all the pyrotechnics we're planning on using. Huh. Guess we'll just have to trust Shin Yan on this one. Oh, Zhang Li. He took one of those fancy meal boxes and set off for the mountains. Said he wanted to pay a visit to some old friends. It's a real pity that he couldn't be around for this. As well as being a true connoisseur of traditional art forms, he's able to appreciate Shin Yan's performances too. Yeah, that's right. Matter of fact, he was the one who first invited me to perform here. To tell the truth, though, I never thought I'd really find myself rehearsing here one day. <laughs> well, now you know. The Wangsheng Funeral Parlor is a great location. All of you are always welcome to come and hang out here, especially if you're in the mood to try something new. I can speak to that. Hu Tao is always full of fun surprises. And jump scares. Actually, Shinyan, I have some lyric ideas for your part. Do you want to go through them together? Oh, sure thing. I'm all ears. Oh, Traveler and Paimon, I believe Zhang Li was heading to Mount Hulao, so make sure you're hiking up the right hill. When you see Zhang Li, please pass on this message to him. It's up to him whether he wants to support us at the performance tonight, but I expect him to make time for the upcoming banquet we're planning. No excuses. You should join us too. It'll be a riot. If there's one thing I've learned from being a funeral director, it's how to throw a party. the city nowadays. Everything's great! But, you know, if you're so curious, you can always go and check it out for yourself. In fact, Mooncarver has been taking many walks on Mount Tianhang in recent times. 
I believe the sights of the city are quite familiar to him. Chun-Li! Here you are! We've brought the bamboo shoots you wanted. Impeccable timing. Traditionally, bamboo shoot soup ought to be slow cooked for many hours on low heat. Using Adeptus Arts to hasten the process is something of a shortcut. Wait, that mechanism, is that? Indeed, Cloud Retainer kindly lent me her supreme cuisine machine. Can we not just call it a cooking machine? Ugh, actually, never mind. She seems to take a lot of pride in her mechanical gizmos, so it's probably best if Paimon doesn't go changing the name willy-nilly. I trust that you found the answers you were seeking during your recent journey. Excellent. The past should be remembered, but not overly dwelt upon. Our journey should be seen as a means to take on more from the world around us. When the bamboo shoot soup is ready, I must insist that you try some for yourself. Oh, Zhang Li, who taught all this to tell you something. She said, it's up to him whether he wants to support us at the performance tonight, but I expect him to make time for the upcoming banquet we're planning. No excuses. When she says performance, she must be in the Lantern Rite Music Festival. As for the banquet, uh, she didn't tell us anything more about that, but she invited us to come as well. As you can see, I have a prior engagement with two Adepti friends of mine tonight. Please, give Director Who my best wishes for the performance. As for the banquet, hmm, since the Director insists, far be it from a mere consultant like myself to refuse. Yay! Then we'll see you there? Absolutely. Rex Lapis, the bamboo shoot soup is ready. Thank you. I will examine it right away. Hmm. The appearance is exquisite, and the aroma rich and intense. The craftsmanship of this machine is commendable indeed. Since you came all this way, you should not leave empty-handed. Please, take some soup. It tastes most exquisite while still warm. to be here on the Iridescence Tour stage. All right, without further ado, I'm Shinyan. This is Hutao, <laughs> and this is a little something called... <laughs> the Flame <laughs> Lilies! <laughs> I'm up here blazing trails through the midnight sky. You'll get burned! Hey! Woo! Yeah! Does anyone have any plans tomorrow? With another year behind us, I think we deserve a celebration of our own. Mm. My treat. Interested? The Tianjuan footing the bill? I can't miss out on that. <laughs>
May the year ahead be a blessed one. I believe it shall be. Master, the Shao Lanterns, I... Ha! Elementary! One shall fashion for you a Shao Lantern the likes of which the world has never seen. And you must take it to Liu Ai Harbor to display its magnificence for all. Director, always so generous. Come on, let's go. Uh, So that's how it is. Thanks for the suggestions, Mr. Zhongli. I have them all noted down. I've long heard that your knowledge encompasses all things old and new, Mr. Zhongli. But I never knew that you were well-versed in the art of cooking, too. It is truly an honor to make your acquaintance. No need for formalities. I, too, feel humbled to be in the company of such talented young people. There are many things I could learn from you. Oh, you flatter us. Um, if it's possible, may I trouble you to provide a few words of guidance for my practices in exorcism? Exorcism? I can't say I'm an expert in the field, but if you don't mind, we could start by discussing... Oh, there's so many people here! All we knew was that Hu Tao invited Zhang Li over. Paimon never thought we'd be meeting so many old friends. <laughs> Happy Lantern Ride, everyone!
Likewise, please take a seat. Happy Lantern Right! Are you having fun? Me too! I've seen Shinyan perform before, but this is the first time I've watched something like this. I heard that the audience loved it too, and she's been receiving quite a lot of performance invitations lately. She's more busy than ever, and Yoonjin's gonna help her. Yep, and they asked us to pass on their season's greetings to everyone. They hope we'll have a wonderful gathering. The performance was spectacular indeed. However... It gave Xiang Ling a huge burst of inspiration, which in turn gave us a bit of a headache. Us? Did Xiang Ling ask you to try out her dishes too? <laughs> that, my friend, is beside the point. Watching you eat was enough for me. <laughs> Come to think of it, I probably shouldn't have burdened Chong Yun with eating my share too. Hold on, Xiang Ling came up with a new recipe? <gasps> Let Paima try! See? Someone here knows how to encourage people. Thanks, Paimon. Oh, and I have to thank Mr. Zhongli, too. He gave me lots of useful pointers that really drove it home for me. Oh, so that's what you were talking about before we arrived. Yes. Since we'll be dining together, the topic of our conversation naturally revolved around cooking. Zhongli's ideas are truly unconventional. Her choices in both ingredients and spices are comparable to a melody dancing on the tongue. My suggestions were nothing more than the icing on the cake. Oh, the two of you always deliver. <laughs> now I'm getting embarrassed. Anyway, I'll get everyone to have a taste after I've adjusted the recipe based on Mr. Zhongli's advice. Hmm, that sounds like it might become a little safer to eat. How about I sample the dishes next time? Speaking of eating, Paimon feels like we're missing someone. Oh, Huta was the one who invited us, but she's not here. And oh, where's Guoba? Oh, the Guoba volunteered to help Dad at the restaurant. You know, lots of people come over to eat during Lantern Rite. Without Guoba helping out, I probably wouldn't have had the time to accept Hutao's invitation. As for Hu Tao... The director went to collect a guest. She asked me to stay here and host you for the time being. Seems like it's almost time. Huh? Hu Tao went to fetch someone in person? Oh, that must mean they are super important. Could it be... Kuching? Ningguang? Or... <gasps> Captain Beto? She didn't clarify. And as her subordinate, I couldn't just pry into the details, could I? Ta-da! We're here! Oh, we're not late to the party, right? Right? Good thing the Conqueror of Demons and I are both as swift as the wind. And whoosh, we made it just in time. I see. So the important guest is the Conqueror of Demons. I've been looking forward to meeting you. The Director didn't mention anything when she invited us. What a pleasant surprise. Gathered here with us tonight are not only young and accomplished individuals, but also the protector of Leo's peace, Adeptus Alatus. To convene here with all of you is indeed a great honor. Uh... It's almost lantern right. Yet you took all the trouble coming here. <sighs> the director has a way of making it difficult to decline. Rex Lapis, may I ask what troubles you? The director asked me to buy sesame oil in preparation for the celebrations. Huh. Then why would you come all the way to Wangshu Inn? I had a pleasant chat with Chef Yenchao and received some spices from him. 
And, see, here's some matsutake and a portion of ham. What about the sesame oil? Hmm, it's a shame. I couldn't find the kind the director was looking for. I'm sure you're exaggerating, Zhang. <clears throat> Sir. Uh, there he goes again. Enough with the pleasantries. Go let our guests take a seat. Everyone here today is well known in their own field and has probably heard about one another to some extent. Some of us are even old acquaintances, so there's no need to be this formal. I heard that the Conqueror of Demons and the Traveler are pretty close, no? Great. You two sit together. You should take a seat too, Director. Oh? Finally remembered me? When we arrived just now, the host at Shinyue Kiosk told me our dishes are almost ready. Perfect timing. Let's not wait any longer and ask them to bring out the food. Paimon would have never guessed the person who Tao went to fetch was Xiao. Oh. That's also the first I've heard of the Traveler and Paimon being friends with the Conqueror of Demons. You know Xiao Chu? Knowing is a bit of an overstatement. I've always looked up to him. You might not know this, Paimon, but we exorcists have worked in close collaboration with the Conqueror of Demons for many generations, dispelling evil together, both in the open and from the shadows. Hard to imagine that thanks to Hu Tao, I've finally gotten the chance to meet him. Conqueror of Demons, I am honored to make your acquaintance. Likewise. It is a great honor indeed to have a chance to meet the legendary Conqueror of Demons. Chang Yun has brought that name up quite a few times in the past. I remember you mentioning wanting him to understand the importance of exorcists. Ahem. Uh, we know each other too. He helped try my dishes during the Masterful Chef's cook-off. <laughs> I didn't think we'd have the chance to meet again. Happy Lantern Rite. No anecdote, however, compares to meeting you in person. I'm Sing Cho, Xiangling and Chang Yun's friend. The pleasure is all mine. Whoa, everyone's getting all formal and polite all of a sudden. Uh, Paimon doesn't know what she should say anymore. Uh, Adeptus Xiao, mighty conqueror of demons. Please accept Paimon's greetings too. Belated happy lantern rite. Paimon tried very hard to look for a fancy word, okay? Don't be too harsh on Paimon! There's no need to be so polite. <laughs> You're right. This was meant to be a nice little get-together between friends, after all. Too much formality kills the atmosphere. I didn't plan this gathering only for everyone to walk on eggshells. Hiya. What's your true intention, then? A little get-together between friends, sipping the finest tea and watching lanterns float into the sky, bidding farewell to the past and embracing the present with joy. And that is something our consultant would say. I think it deserves a standing ovation. Indeed. Exceptional acting skills, Director. As for me, I'm just here to have fun and treat everyone to something good. We all worked really hard this year, whether traveling or guiding, cooking, helping with the family business, exercising evil spirits, or conquering demons. And of course, our consultant, who's been helping out at the parlor every now and then. Everyone has done some pretty amazing things. As the one who brought everyone together, it goes without saying that I'm the one most deserving of praise. Huh? Sounds kind of self-important, but... Paimon thinks it's pretty amazing that she managed to talk Xiao into coming. He rarely ever enters Liyue Harbor, after all. It wasn't as complicated as you think. Huh. 
Okay, gotcha. Thanks, boss lady. Uh, it's not boss lady, just boss. <sighs> and there she goes. What a lively girl. Conqueror of demons, adept of Shao. Guardian of Wangshu in, hero of Dihua Marsh. I know you're there. <sighs> Quiet. Do not disturb the peace. Sorry, but you wouldn't show up if I didn't yell your name, would you? I know you. You're the 77th director of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. Is there something you need? <laughs> that does sound like one of Hu Tao's antics. Did the Conqueror of Demons agree to come so that Hu Tao would stop pestering him? There might be other reasons. <laughs> Smart guess. Huh? There's more to it? It gets pretty boring from here on. I talked about the funeral parlor's past relationships with the Guardian Yakshas. You know, just to be sociable. In the time of the Archon War, disputes were frequent, and disaster overtook the land. Humans couldn't escape from the torment of the plague, nor could they escape death. The Adepti vanquished the demons, the Millilith fought valiantly, and Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor was responsible for purifying the diseased and sending off the spirits of the dead. That is how the border between life and death was maintained during the war. And it effectively prevented further incidents from happening. That's right. One point for the consultant. But despite our deep-rooted connection, it still took me quite a while to actually convince him. You know him pretty well, huh? This matter is out of my control, so I need to be cautious. True, but I've kept that in mind, too. That's why everyone here today is in one way or another acquainted with elemental power. Besides, it'll only be for a short while as we dine together. There won't be any lasting consequences. But I didn't expect there to be so many people. There's no need to worry, Conqueror of Demons. We're not feeling anything unusual so far. Our young exorcist over here is protected by his pure yang energy, so he's probably the most resilient. Th that's not the same. And did you just toss your carrots into my bowl? Hey, don't look away. Huh? What? I'm siding with Chong Yoon. I saw that too. Your lucky Guoba isn't here today. He hates seeing people being picky with their food. If he'd seen that, he'd definitely make you eat all your carrots. Huh? Guoba would do that? Is he that uncompromising? Hmm, but now that I think of it, Shangling told me that Guoba used to be the stove god. <laughs> it sounds like you've heard the rumors. Hmm. I'm doing fine. Not long ago, before Lantern Rite, I met an old friend. Thanks to his help, things have been a lot more stable than before. You should know him. He's... Seeds of story brought by the wind. And cultivated by time. Uh, did Paima just unconsciously complete the thing? That voice. Could it be? Hmm? If I'm not mistaken, there's someone knocking at the door. Oh, don't just sit there, Zhongli. Go welcome our guest in. No such need. I'm coming in. <laughs> you finally let me in. Hello, hello. No matter if we've met before or not, this moment marks a brand new encounter. Old friends and new, happy lantern rite. Oh, 
It's the tongue deaf bard. Huh? Oh, <laughs> he seems to carry a valiant breeze wherever he goes. It looks like we're going to be friends. Fate has brought us together, so come on, take a seat and be my guest. Help yourself. Oh, I'll ask them for another set of cutlery. Mm-hmm. This young lady here is as bright as a fresh bouquet of flowers in the morning's rising sun. She no doubt is the one with the most authority here. Whoa, these dishes look amazing. Is it really okay for me to join in? <laughs> All right, I'm digging in. Huh, it's you. Oh, isn't this Genu? Hmm? Genu? Uh, yep. Now that I've taken a closer look, you're a fan of Genu's works, aren't you? I met Sing Cho at a light novel convention. Oh, how I wish we'd met sooner. I never expected that there'd be another person in this world who could interpret Genu's new novel as thoroughly as I could. Venti, you're being too humble. Considering your poetic talent, your fundamentals are way more impressive. <clears throat> Could this new guest be Master Singcho's friend? Yes, yes. Monsters become more active than usual as we get closer to Lantern Rite. I was patrolling Dihua Marsh a few days ago, when I happened to run into this... this... Hmm? You've already forgotten? I'm a bard, remember? And bards go around singing wherever they like. Oh, right. And this bard was performing in Dihua Marsh. It was a... moving melody. And it made me feel relaxed and at ease. I... couldn't help but stay and listen. <laughs> Thank you for your patronage. I understand now, too. I'm Zhong Li, currently working at the Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor. It's a pleasure to meet you, new friend. Mm-hmm. And I'm his boss. Oh, and if there's anything unsatisfactory, let me know any time. That's very considerate of you. Oh? Hmm. No wonder. Only a boss as savvy and reliable as you would be able to hire such an impressive consultant. <laughs> oh, you're too nice, Venti. Not to brag, but our consultant truly really is impressive. His knowledge extends across the stars in the land, and there's nothing throughout history that he doesn't know. From the sophisticated way he speaks, it's hard not to suspect that he could very well be an adeptus in disguise. <laughs> so, you're an adeptus. Do you think it might be possible? I... Sorry. I'm only good at conquering demons. I'm afraid I don't have much knowledge in that matter. Uh, really? But Paimon thinks you're super knowledgeable. Huh? Oh, oh! Right! Uh, Shao's a warrior! He doesn't come to the city very often, so it's, uh, pretty normal for him to not know anything. Yeah. Eh? Really? I've actually heard a few things about Mr. Zhongli before. The guests in the tavern talked about this refined and courteous man who, instead of having wine at Mondstadt's finest tavern, ordered a cup of hot tea with the most complex name. Now that you mention it, I seem to recall that there indeed is a musician like yourself in Mondstadt. I've heard that he's elegant and amiable, his works witty and vibrant. It's no overstatement to regard him as the best bard in Mondstadt. <laughs> now you're making me embarrassed. I would say that Mondstadt's poetry is a little run-of-the-mill sometimes. There's one I heard a while back that went, <clears throat> The old house is renewed, welcoming the spring breeze, awakening old memories. 
The meaning's there, but the word choices are unimaginative, and there's a distinct lack of literary flair. I think so, too. The composition needs a little jazzing up. If I were to give it a go, I'd make it... An old melon on a vine, a new flower that grows fine. Oh, good one! It feels unique and has a nice ring to it. You have great taste, Bendy. I was afraid about you. Let's shake hands. Of course, of course. Hmm. Uh. Hey, Xingcho. Hmm? Mind lending me a few books when we get back? Pick out some well-written ones. I don't know if it's my own lack of literary knowledge, but I couldn't tell the difference between those two. I don't think it's your fault. Chung Yun's right. It's not our fault. Oh, you have a point. But speaking of... Why is the tone deaf bard here? Are you here to take part in Lantern Rite too? I heard that Liyue will be hosting a Lantern Rite music festival this year. As a musician myself, how could I possibly resist the temptation to come take a look? <laughs> or a listen. Getting to know other musical styles is essential to sparking inspiration, don't you think? As for the Fontaine friend who hosted the festival, I saw him near Stone Gate the other day. The Iridescence tour has finally been held successfully for once, so I had to congratulate him. Don't think anything of it. By the way, I was watching as you entered Shinyue Kiosk, but no one seemed to notice me. Should I say that it's because I'm an expert in hiding, or that a certain someone deliberately ignored the sound of the wind? <laughs> Whenever Lantern Rite comes around, Liyue Harbor becomes bustling with activity. People are all busy watching the lanterns and strolling around the shops, and they might just go travel somewhere on a whim. It is rather difficult to predict another's whereabouts. The festival is in full swing and proceeding smoothly. And we're all gathered here with friends, new and old. This is no doubt a wonderful occasion worth celebrating. To come together with all of you at the beginning of the year, one can't help but be filled with joy. In a moment like this, I propose we raise a glass together. In my case, tea in lieu of wine. Uh... Well said, Mr. Zhongli. That was exactly what I wanted to say. Uh, now I'm getting a little self-conscious. I didn't cause you too much trouble barging in like that, did I? We usually drink wine during occasions like this over in Mondstadt, but since Mr. Zhongli insists on drinking tea, I'll give a toast with tea too. Everyone, thanks for the treat. You're welcome. As the host of this gathering, I hope everyone enjoys the food and drinks. May this year be better than the last. Considering that everyone may have other matters to attend to later, sticking to tea seems like a good idea. Uh... All of a sudden, they started proposing toasts! Should... should we? What's with the urgency? <sighs> sure. Have you two finished eating? It's always nice to have a breath of fresh air after a meal. Helps with digestion. Um, uh, Paima will come too.
Are you all right? I... It's hard to describe. It's not that. There were those among the Adepti who loved gatherings and idle chit-chat. Sometimes they would call up a few others for a drink. Even I got dragged along to their gatherings many times. The Adepti all have their specialties, making most of them proud and arrogant. Everything they say is straight from the heart. It never gets too complicated. But this time... That's not what I meant. Or perhaps I should say Jean... Uh, Rex Lapis is really good at adapting to human life. You could say that he actually enjoys doing so. And that's something I might never be able to do. Hmm. That does sound like something you would say. No matter. I know my circumstances. Whenever I think of the ordinary conversations I've had with you, it feels... strangely novel. Yes. The parlor director went out of her way with the invitation, so it was difficult to turn her down. I had made mental preparations before agreeing to come. She told me that all the guests today would be acquainted with elemental power. And I knew that you would be here, but I didn't expect the other guests to be... General Capesis always said that we should live in the present and enjoy every pleasant surprise. Perhaps that's what I should do with what I'm feeling now. But I think he meant designing clothes for those around him. The clothes were intricately designed, but inconvenient to wear. Brother Bosatius never tried to hide his distaste in front of him. Rex Lapis did like his designs and even collected quite a few. The outfit he wears now was also designed by General Capesis himself. I never saw him wear this during the war. I didn't expect him to start wearing it later. Oh, here you are! Um, I'm not intruding, right? You're not. What is it? A hotel saw that everyone's done eating and asked the staff to bring out the desserts. Paimon got so anxious that you weren't back yet that she scarfed down her dessert without the usual slurping and munching. And to be honest, I was kind of worried too. You looked a little restless just now, and I thought you weren't used to the food here and was planning to head back to Wangshu Inn for something Yan Chao made. You're worrying too much. Why would I? Anyway, let's head back. Please wait! There's another reason why I came looking for you. Here, take these. I brought them for you. Almond tofu? Yup. Since the Masterful Chef's competition, you could say that Yan Xiao and I are not only competitors, but good friends as well. I visit him at Wang Xuan sometimes to discuss our cooking. I heard him say that the esteemed guest on the roof loves nothing more than a good plate of almond tofu, so I learned a thing or two about the dish from him. I'll be honest, before Hu Tao invited everyone, she secretly came looking for me, told me about the guests she planned to invite, and asked me for some suggestions on what she should order. So I made a few servings of almond tofu for you guys in advance. Take them as a token of gratitude for your support. When I told Globa that I was making these for you, he started eagerly running around the kitchen and helping a lot too. Thank you for the trouble. There was no need to... I'll take them. Thank you. And Guoba too. 
You're welcome. Oh, the almond tofu I made probably tastes and feels a little different from the Taipian Shao cooks. Please let me know if there's any improvements I should make. Okay. <laughs> That's all. Alrighty, we should head back now. We can't keep Paimon waiting. You're finally done whispering secrets to each other? So much for promising Paimon you'll be back soon! <laughs> How could you say that to Paimon? <sighs> In that case, besides having no sense of time, Paimon will let you know what having no sense of fullness looks like. Your dessert is all Paimon! Sorry to keep everyone waiting. No worries, we're all just chatting here. There's no serious business to take care of. Whether we're chatting out... Secrets to each other? So much for promising Paimon you'll be back soon. Hmm. Ha, how could you say that to Paimon? <sighs> In that case, besides having no sense of time, Paimon will let you know what having no sense of fullness looks like. Your dessert is all Paimon. Sorry to keep everyone waiting. No worries, we're all just chatting here. There's no serious business to take care of. Whether we're chatting outside or inside, it's all the same. Hmm, Paimon's too busy eating to talk to you. But even though we're all well acquainted by now, I think this festive gathering deserves something ceremonious. Oh? Is this some local custom? Nope. This is something I made up so that good luck will be on our side, that's all. Spontaneity is the best choice to make here. Um, let's use this incense burner on the table. It's been lit for so long now that the incense is running out. I'll leave refilling and lighting the incense to the most distinguished guest among us all. Lighting the incense will signify continuous growth and prosperity in all our endeavors in the new year. I see. Perfect symbolism, as expected of Hu Tao. And speaking of the most distinguished guest here today, I'm sure we all agree that it's Mr. Zhang Li. I'm not very familiar with the details of his past deeds, but chatting with him has been a real eye-opener even for a bard who has traveled all across the world. If knowledge were a form of power, one could even say that you're a wielder of unlimited strength. But when it comes to having a way with words, the notable bard is certainly one cut above the rest. I just happen to have a good memory. It is such an unexceptional skill, yet you made it sound like an unparalleled talent. I am truly impressed. Since we all get to nominate someone... Mm-hmm. I think it's only fair that we let the parlor director light the incense. 
Huh? That won't do. Don't flatter me just because I'm your boss. We are looking for the most distinguished guest here. As the host, I shouldn't be involved in this discussion at all. Now that we've enjoyed this table full of delicacies, how about we let our one and only chef here do the honors? Um, is this really the way this works? I didn't cook any of these dishes. It's not a big deal. Just look at her. Xiangling, the disciple of an adeptus, the stove god's best companion, the winner of the Masterful Chef's competition. The only heir of the famous Wan Min restaurant. A good old friend of mine. There's no better choice. <laughs> uh, why does Paimon feel like we're back at square one again? You're making me embarrassed. If we're looking for a distinguished guest, surely the second son of the Feiyun Commerce Guild counts. It's one of the largest commerce guilds in Liyue Harbor. Huh? Don't get me involved in this. Oh, not a bad choice. With the Commerce Guild's young master lighting the incense, we're all sure to make a huge sum of mora in the new year. That's not how it works. Making a fortune is indeed a fine wish but it's of lesser importance than good health and happiness. Which means we should choose Chong Yun, the skilled exorcist who keeps everyone's home safe from evil spirits. Huh? Now you're nominating me? I can't be the one when we have the conqueror of demons right here. Adeptus Xiao has the most seniority among everyone here today. We should... I refuse. I am most certainly not the most distinguished guest here. You should all be able to make the right judgment based on your observations. One person here is well acquainted with everyone else. That's right! Even though you're always mocking Paimon, you're still pretty popular with other people. No, wait! Paimon said she wouldn't talk to you again! Huh? Who else is there? Huh? Huh? Does that mean... Paimon's the most distinguished guest? Oh, well, that was unexpected! <laughs> I agree. Paimon's just the one we need. Without a friend constantly by your side, a long journey would become dreadfully lonesome. But once you have someone there to brighten up the atmosphere, everything along the way will become lively and vibrant, too. Ah. The Traveler has traversed many nations, and left behind a great deal of fascinating stories. But without Paimon, they would have become quite monotonous. Paimon plays an indispensable role in making your journey a happy and smooth one. You guys... Paimon's not used to being praised like that. Uh, those were genuine compliments, right? Thank you. You made Paimon wait for a long time, but Paimon's not mad anymore. Don't take everything to heart, Paimon. Friends tease each other all the time. Hmm. That is indeed true. That means Paimon is as important to the Traveler as Guoba is to me. <laughs> Looks like we've come to an agreement. Any objections before we proceed? I trust the Traveler's judgment. Then Paimon it is. And now, the world's most excellent traveler's greatest companion, guide, and friend, Paimon, will be refilling and lighting the incense for us. Here you go. Take the match, and uh, don't burn yourself. But if things go really wrong, here's a two-for-one coupon.
it's getting late. I won't take up any more of your time. You're all free to go as you please. Yep, the tea was amazing, too. You don't have to go all polite on me. Just remember to come when I invite you next time. Hmm, let's see. It's dark out, so I'm going to accompany Xiang Ling, Sing Cho, and Chang Yun back home. As for the rest of the guests, I'll leave them to our consultant. No need. I'm headed towards the harbor to meet a friend on the ship. There's no need to trouble one such as Mr. Zhang Li. I think you know the place I'm talking about. Come meet me anytime. It was great getting to know you all. Let's meet again when the spring breeze begins to blow. Bye. Oh, we should write poetry together sometime. We'll catch you all later then. Don't forget to return to the parlor later. There's something I need you to do. Understood. See you later. <sighs> well then. Rex Lapis. Just Zhongli will do. I live as a mortal in Liu Harbor now. I am just one among many who begin work at sunrise and retire to rest at sundown. If we were to consider status and seniority as Zhong Li, I should be respectfully referring to you as Adeptus Shao. Ugh. Heaven forbid. <laughs> I meant what I said. I heard that during the Lantern Rite Music Festival, you conferred with Streetward Rambler and Cloud Retainer. I take it as you've gained a lot more knowledge about the past? The same truth will sound different coming from different people. As more bear witness to a story, feelings and interpretations expand in variety too. I once had a pleasant chat about the past and present with a Sumeru scholar named Soraya, and learned a few things about her research topic. From the evidence she found and the conclusion she made, her area of research is already very close to the truth. But there are multiple sides to humans. And gods alike. In the legends recorded by humans, some gods were depicted as arrogant and condescending, while others were kind and capable. But whether to me, Streetward Rambler, Cloud Retainer, or younger Adepti such as Shao and Ganyu, those Adepti and gods that may seem extraordinary to humans are something more akin to close companions. This was as true back then as it is right now. Just how Xiao may seem unapproachable to most, but the Traveler has proved otherwise. So there's no need to dwell too much on certain things. Rex La... <clears throat> I mean, Zhang Li, what you're saying is... It looks like you understood what I meant. Ah. The Director asked me to accompany you on your return, but I don't think you'll need my protection. I'll be taking a walk around and admiring the night scenery. After that, it'll be time for me to go back and meet up with the director. Goodbye for now. Bye, Zhang Li. Everyone's gone now. Paimon always feels a little empty inside when a lively celebration ends. But at least you always stay by Paimon's side. No, no, no. Paimon got it mixed up. Paimon, the best and most distinguished travel guide, will always stay by your side, Traveler. Hmm. Good that you're aware of that. Shell, is there anything else you want to do? We could take you on a tour of Liyue Harbor. No need. I've stayed here for much longer than I had expected. The city lights are a fine sight, but it's time for me to leave. The events of today occurred so abruptly. I appreciate your kindness. Okay. I'll see you next time, then. Yeah.